Hello, my name's Finn. I'm a flight instructor. I fly mainly from Redhill in Surrey. And I'm recording this on bonfire night. You'll be able to hear some bangs in the background as people let off fireworks near where I live. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because at this time of year, the weather starts to get a lot worse, starts to get a lot wetter. And if you operate from grass runways, of which Red Hill has many grass runways, then this starts to become a problem as the runways start to get waterlogged. At Red Hill, we've got this really great facility of a hard runway that's not normally used. It's, it's a lot shorter and it's unlicensed, unlike the other runways. But when the grass runways become waterlogged, uh, we're permitted to use this runway. It's known as runway 0624. And over the next sort of 15 minutes, I'm going to go over some of the gotchas, whether you're a student pilot who's struggling to uh, master their circuits, whether you're a seasoned pilot who's not used to flying on this runway, or whether you want just a little refresher and uh, to pick my brains about uh, the things that I see people struggle with and just things to be uh, aware of and possible gotchas when you're operating uh, from Red Hill to and from Red Hill when we're using uh, this hard runways and the grass runways aren't available. So we're going to go over some of those things. Well, in fact, let's straight off get started and look at the circuit pattern. So if you're familiar with Red Hill, you'll be uh, you'll be used to the circuit pattern on runway uh, 25 left and right or maybe 07 left and right here. And the circuit pattern for 2, 4 and 0, 6 is very similar. There's just a slightly longer base and uh, crosswind legs here. And in fact, you can download the um, the circuit diagram from the Red Hill Aviation's uh, website here. If you just go to pilot info and operational information, there's tons of really useful information on here, including, I think this is it, yep, the circuit diagram for when we're using runway 0, 6, 2, 4. And there's some helpful information in uh, the corners here. And essentially, you do all the same things that you do on uh, 2507, where you're flying over Benting Wood, you're flying well south there, you're 25 there, and then you're keeping east of Henhaw Farm. I always uh, get those I'm training to aim just east of this horse field here, which is really visible because it's got a kind of sandy surface. It's really visible from the sky. To just fly the other side of that. So that's the circuit, um, pretty self-explanatory. One thing to watch out for, and we'll come, we'll touch on this in a second, is the helicopter circuit. So keep that in the back of your mind. Next thing I want to talk about is the runway illusion. And before I go any further, let's have a look at what the runway looks like itself. So here's the airport chart. I just got this from the AIP. If you want to get this as well, if you just Google UK AIP, uh, it'll take you to this Nats website and get yourself down to uh, the AIP here. Once you've opened it up, on the left-hand side here, if you go to aerodromes, find Red Hill and scroll to the bottom and click on the aerodrome chart there. It'll take you to this. I really recommend having this printed out and on your kneeboard as you're flying around for Red Hill. It's really useful. Um, and you can see here, you've got the main grass runways. And what's that main grass runway says here? It's about just under 900 meters, about 30 meters wide. Whereas this runway here, the 2406, is 498 metres long. So almost uh, just over half as long as the main runway here. And it's about 10 metres wide, although the surface it's painted on is more like 14 metres wide. So it's about half as wide. And the reason I mention those dimensions is because there's some real possibility to... Um, have some runway illusions, especially if you're used to operating on bigger runways, whether that be at Red Hill or elsewhere. If you remember from your PPL ground school or whatever ground school you've achieved, you will know from the human factors um, part of it that when you fly to wider or narrower runways, it can change how your brain wants to fly your approach. So you can see when you fly from a narrow runway here, and this is just stolen from the uh, FAA's workbook here, um, that you may find yourself flying a lower approach than you would normally. And when you get to the runway, your brain's going to think it's further away than it actually is. So you'll find your brain wanting to flare later. Um, and I do see this happen quite often. People leave it to the last minute to begin their landing flare in a hold off. And they'll have really dragged in a really low approach here, which isn't really ideal, not what you want. So stop doing that. Just make sure you've hit all your gates. And what I mean by that is, um, if I bring up the circuit diagram here. So the circuit's at 1,200 feet 
and that's altitude, so that's in the Q and H. And the airport itself is around 200, 220 ish uh, feet. So you can say that the circuit's normal, uh, standard ish, about 1,000 feet above the aerodrome. So as you turn onto your base leg here, if we were using Westleys, which is quite likely, then as you turn onto your base leg here, you want to be about half your descending on your base. So thus you want to be about 500 foot above the runway uh, where, when you turn from base to final. And at Red Hill, as we're a couple hundred feet up in the air, that'll mean you're about 700 feet. So if you've got these gates and you can continue that a similar um, rate of descent down to the runway, then you should be on track and not uh, getting too low or, or even too high. So yeah, just make sure you're hitting those gates there. So be aware of runway illusions and especially the runway length. If you're not used to running on sh uh, landing, sorry, on short runways, then it can be a bit disconcerting. Suddenly you'll see the runway end rushing up towards you. Just um, don't be tempted to do what I see lots of people do, and this is a real gotcha, and that's rush the landing. As you get down to the runway, just flare and hold off and land nicely on those main wheels as normal. Don't rush the plane down, otherwise you'll end up landing either flat or even worse, nose wheel first. Um, and, and that's not going to be safe. If you've landed, even if you've touched down and you don't think you've got enough runway remaining, then the best option at that point, uh, if you haven't hit the brakes already and started to slow down, is just to go full power and go around. So don't forget, you can go around even after you've touched down. It's technically called a bulk landing, but same difference, same procedure. Um, and you will have be, you'll be used to doing this already because in your training you did loads of touch and goes. So you don't feel uh, like this is something you can't uh, can't do like you're committed although really once you start hitting the brakes and trying to slow down then uh, you pretty much made your decision and committed there so yeah just be a bit aware of the runway length in addition to that make sure that you've done your takeoff and landing performance correctly especially if it's if the runway is wet which is likely to be even if it hasn't been raining that day um, what we often see is the runway may remain uh, damp, which uh, has the same performance as wet nowadays. Um, and there are sometimes water patches on some parts of this runway as it's towards the bottom of the hill, bottom of the aerodrome. And um, although the air airport have done some really great work on drainage over the years, uh, it's still sometimes an issue in the winter. Next thing to talk about is the runway surface, which, well, it's hard. It's a, it's a concrete asphalt taxiway. And for those of you who are used to operating on grass, if you're used to operating from Red Hill, there are a couple of differences to just keep in the back of your mind and be aware of. Personally, I, I enjoy operating from both grass and hard runways. And, but there's a couple of differences that I just want to make you aware of. I would say the first thing is, is the hard runway is a lot less um, forgiving if you haven't got the plane pointing directly down the runway. So if the tyres of your aircraft aren't pointing directly straight ahead down the runway in, the de in your direction of travel, then as you touch down, you will feel um, some lateral movement. You'll feel you're pushed to the left or the right one way, one way or the other. And that's a little clue to you that you weren't, you didn't actually use that rudder correctly in the flare to make sure that the nose of the aircraft is pointing straight down the runway. Another thing to just be aware of really with that hard runway is this has got a center line painted on which most grass runways don't have. So this hard runway has, and it actually technically it's not a center line, it's the taxi line because this is normally used as a taxiway. But this is really good practice to see how good you are at A, landing right on the center line and B, taking off right on the center line. Because don't forget, as you apply takeoff power, the aircraft's going, going to want to normally or to left uh, for most of the training aircraft we have in this country. And so really keep an eye on outside and use this to stay on your A game. Even if you're a, you've are you been flying for a long time, you've got your PPL or, or whatever stage of flying you're at, um, use that center line as a good way to brush up your skills and make sure that you're uh, bringing your A game to your flying. Next thing to mention is the helicopter circuit traffic. Now, Red Hill is so busy with helicopters. We've got the police and the air ambulance that operate a lot. And then there's also some uh, a lot of private helicopters and some flight training organisations uh, with their helicopters there. So it's quite a busy place. And if you're used to operating in and around Red Hill, you'd be used to the helicopters. And normally when we're on the grass runways, uh, 
it's the yeah, aerodromes designed that we kind of keep quite separate. You might occasionally see them um, using uh, Buckland or Godson railway station VRPs in the opposite direction to the, the direction that you're using, but that's normally the only real time that you sort of come into any huge conflict. However, when we are using the hard runway, you might also find that there's helicopter circuit traffic using either the main runway still, which they can use when it's waterlogged because they're not touching down, or this uh, heli strip here in the grass. And you may also actually find them using some of these heli, uh, heli training areas here, um, which are much closer to the run to this hard runway than they are to the grass runways when we're using those. So just be aware of that, and also note that the helicopter circuits are to the south of the airfield. So what happens when we're using the hard runway, if I just bring up the circuit pattern here, is you'll end up with the helicopters to the south and at some point our paths have to cross with them. So just keep your ears and eyes working properly. I mean that might sound about weird but keep your ears on the radio and listen out for radio uh, helicopter circuit traffic and keep your eyes peeled and just be a bit aware that at some point if, they're, if you're in the circuit with them they're going to cross paths with you. And, uh, and really keep your situational awareness high so you know what's going on and uh, visually acquire that helicopter as soon as you can and uh, just what, keep a good eye on it and watch out for it. And if at any point you're not happy with the separation, tell air traffic control. Um, don't forget you can go around from any part of the circuit as well. So even if you're on base and you don't like the look of what's going to happen, then either adjust your, uh, slightly adjust your circuit or just, just go around um, and have another go. Nothing wrong with that at all. So that's helicopter circuit traffic. And then taxiing. This is a really interesting one, actually. And I think the controllers get a really hard job of this. I always have a lot of respect for the controllers, uh, the controllers at Red Hill when it gets to this time of year. Because at first glance on this chart, it looks like this taxiway, uh, which is Delta here, um, Hotel, Echo, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. It looks like it goes all the way around the airfield and thus you could just use it all the way around. But what they don't tell you, or well, what's not so clear on this chart, is actually this hangar and this helipad area blocks the taxiway. So it ends up that actually if you're uh, here where my cursor is now, the only way to runway, uh, runway 2406 is down this taxiway. And thus also if you're landing on this runway, then the only way back up to lots of general av aviation parking up here is this uh, very same taxiway. And obviously it's one way at a time. So it can get quite complicated. I describe it to people as, um, you know, there's little, there's little games you get in Christmas crackers where there's, I don't know, like about uh, six little pictures uh, or maybe five little pictures in one hole and you've got to try and move it all around to fit it all in. That's sometimes what it can get like at, at Red Hill, especially if it's busy. Um, so here is how it might affect you as a pilot. So first off, when you leave, if you're parked up here or even around here, if there's someone arriving into Red Hill, maybe they've just landed on the runway, you may be told to hold position and wait for that traffic to finish taxiing up Delta, or if it's coming the other way, maybe it's gonna go all the way around here before and park up on this parking area before you can then taxi down this taxiway. So often you'll find uh, there's quite some delays in leaving the parking area. Other things that might happen is you might be told to, um, after landing, say you're landing on runway 2-4, you might be told to actually, after landing, go to backtrack the runway and then go to either one of these holding points, Bravo 2 or Charlie 2, and do an 180 degree turn and wait there. And that's because someone's coming down here or they need you just clear of the runway. And maybe there's someone at Delta 2 ready and waiting to go. And, um, you know, they are, if you were trying to get up to this bit of airfield, they wouldn't be able to send you up that way. So they've got to send you back here towards Bravo 2 or Charlie 2. So don't be surprised after landing when you're told, instead of just taxiing the way you were expecting to, to get told to backtrack the runway and go hold somewhere that you might not have expected. Now, 180 degree turns on these taxiways can be hard, especially if you're in um, something like a PA28 that doesn't have an amazing turning circle. So just make sure when you are doing your 180 de degree turns on the taxiway that you have the aircraft all the way over to one side of the taxiway before you start the turn. 
and then do this at a nice slow controlled pace so sl slower than walking pace to start and then go full you know left or right rudder bringing the brakes just enough to really tighten that turn radius but not so much that that wheel is scrubbing and you're going to have to match that with some power as well to keep it coming around otherwise you're going to end up stopping so just be uh, yeah just be wary especially around taxiway charlie the surface is getting a bit old and often you can find the grass north and south of Charlie, grassy areas there can get quite muddy or sometimes even totally flooded at some times, uh, some parts of the air. So be aware of that. Something you can do to help air traffic control at Red Hill out is if you're arriving and you know you're going to require fuel afterwards or you know where you're going to go somewhere a bit different, maybe to the maintenance hangar down in the southeast corner here, then just let them know um, on an early call and then they can start to plan the ground movement um, around. And that might help them out, actually, if they've got some people that are waiting for you to come. Maybe they're assuming you to come back, uh, assuming you're going to go to the end of taxiway delta and actually going to go to fuel. That means they can get a lot of aircraft if they're waiting up here to come down and do their checks uh, before they get going. So yeah, it becomes a bit of a, a bit of a tricky place to taxi, mainly for the air controllers, uh, air traffic controllers' sake, um, when runway zero six two four is in use. All right, a um, couple other things to mention when the ground is really soft at Red Hill, um, especially if you're parking on the grass, is that. The grass normally in the parking areas can get quite wet and waterlogged. So two things to, I just wanted to quickly mention while we're thinking about parking is it might be an idea to instead of coming off the hard taxiway and doing a nice uh, a nice a nice sort of U-turn on the grass, what you'll find is if you start doing that in the winter, you'll at some point just going to get stuck in the stuck in the mud. So when it gets to a certain time of year, especially when 0624 is in use, it's a good sign that this time of year has come. Then when you get to where you want to park, instead of going onto the grass, stay on the hard, do a 90 degree turn with your aircraft, nice tight one, so the back of your plane is facing where you want to park, switch off, do your shutdown checks, get out. Um, and you know you might need some help for this, so don't be afraid to ask for some help and push that plane back onto the taxiway, uh, off the taxiway onto the grass. Consequently, you'll find lots of aircraft really close to hard taxiways. Um, often ops uh, up at Red Hill Aviation will draw a white line in the grass, which is where they want everyone, the front of everyone's plane to be, just so there's enough wing tick clearance. But just be really careful of the uh, end of your wings uh, when you're taxiing and there's planes parked really close to the taxiway. As in previous years, I know Red Hill Aviation have had um, some instance surrounding this. Other thing to mention when we're using Romney 0624 is some planning restrictions and they're actually alluded to on the Red Hill Aviation website here. It says here when you go to General Aviation and uh, there's a general information sorry and Romney 0624 there's a restriction, a planning restriction uh, saying that there's a maximum of 85 movements um, and that's under a seven day rolling average. Now, this is normally okay in the depths of winter, especially if the weather's bad, but if we have prolonged areas, uh, prolonged periods of high pressure when the weather's really good and everyone's trying to get the flying fix in, then often we can end up having limits on how many movements we can do on the runway. This will be promulgated to you via NOTAM, so check your usual place that you get your NOTAMs from. Uh, maybe that's Sky Demon, maybe that's the uh, Nats website. But just be a bit aware that sometimes they may restrict the amount of circuits you can do. And they may even do this at the last minute if they suddenly do the maths in midway through the day and realise that they're going to break this. Um, you can see how they're doing as well. They're very, um, very proactive in publishing this, as they have to be, unfortunately. And you can see here... Um, can get the data yourself and sort of see how they're doing this they publish this for people for external residents so so they're nice and uh, transparent to them so just be a bit aware of that and keep an eye on the no terms next thing to talk about is sunset and official night and there's a bit of a gotcha here which i think is a bit confusing and that's if you if you've been a very good pilot and you've done your research and you've looked in the red hill fix win wing ops document big old document uh, but it talks about runway 0624 uh, where was it uh, it talks about using runway 0624 and when I find the right section it says that it's available between sunrise and official night 
However, this is a bit of a gotcha because elsewhere in the document, it says here around taxiing that um, grass areas, including the unlit runways, are only available between sunrise and sunset. This runway is unlit, so it's only available for us fixing aircraft between sunrise and sunset. So don't get caught out by that. And just be aware that you know the helicopters can use it until official night, but fixed wing for taxiing around, uh, we can't. So be aware, be aware of when sunset time is. Make sure you've checked that, and don't plan to arrive right at sunset because you can almost guarantee that several other people will, especially in the shorter days of winter around the middle of December. You can imagine everybody, uh, you know, when the days are quite short, everyone's trying to get their flying in, and you can quite easily foresee a problem where everyone's trying to rush home for sunset so just be a bit careful with that so how do you know when runway 0624 is in use it's quite simple it'll be on a NOTAM and also the Red Hill Aerodrome website uh, will have it on their daily briefing this is really useful if you operate from Red Hill if you go to the web website and go to airfield briefing here then it tells you uh, it tells you all about what's um, in action and what's not in action and then, um, do you need a checkout? Well, not legally, not officially, although if you fly from Red Hill Aviation, they do require you to have a checkout. But if you fly from uh, anywhere, maybe you're a private operator in and out of Red Hill, I really recommend, you know, if you're feeling a bit uncertain about it and you're not used to operating on runways of this size, it is quite small, um, then really do a good checkout with the instructor. doesn't hurt. You can maybe even use it as part as towards your hour with instructor requirement for if it's in your second year for your SEP revalidation. So if you want to do some more research or see where I got all my information from, uh, all you really need to go to is the UK AIP, look at the Red Hill section, also a good place to get your NOTAMs from, and then check out the Red Hill Aerodrome website, get that circuit diagram printed out, get that airfield chart printed out, uh, read through their fixed wing procedures. It's a really useful document if you're um, if you're even just visiting uh, for one time or if you're used to operating from Red Hill, it's really useful. So hopefully that was helpful for you and I hope that this winter enables you to do some really good flying. I love some of the weather that you can get in the winter, especially those crisp, cool days. We have blue skies and the air mass is just so smooth and still. I really hope we have some of those days this winter and I hope to see you up there in the skies. So thanks very much for watching and enjoy operating from Runway 0624.